There is no statute of limitations on logic. Consequently, the reasoning of an almost century-old case which addressed an issue regarding a defendant's release from civil arrest and which in so doing necessarily interpreted the same phrase at issue on the instant motion governs the construction of the controlling no-fault insurance regulation which has not previously been judicially construed. The defendant here seeks to utilize its own inaction to escape the payment of the statutory interest to which it will otherwise be subject. The application of that earlier decision's reasoning mandates the denial of the motion. The plaintiff brings the instant action to recover no-fault insurance benefits. The defendant moves for an order to stay non-pro-tunk to two and a half years ago when defendant served its responses to the plaintiff's discovery demands the accrual of the interest which would otherwise increase any recovery the plaintiff may obtain. The ground for the defendant's request is that the plaintiff has unreasonably delayed in its prosecution of this matter. The plaintiff responds that since the defendant could have moved the matter forward as easily as the plaintiff, a stay of the accrual of interest is, as a matter of law, not justified. The insurance department regulations governing no-fault entitled interest on overdue payments provides 1. All overdue mandatory personal injury protection benefits due an applicant or assignee shall be at an interest rate of 2% per month compounded and calculated on a pro rata basis using a 30-day month. In the event that the defendant is able to substantiate a claim that the plaintiff has unreasonably delayed the progress of a case, there is therefore no interest awarded. It is an all or nothing proposition, either the accumulation of interest at a rate that is clearly punitive and meant to compel the expeditious resolution of these matters or no interest at all. The defendant argues that any delay on the part of the plaintiff benefits the plaintiff's attorney because the longer the delay, the more interest is accrued and the higher the attorney's fees, which upon a cap are calculated as a percentage or recovery, including interest. The defendant argues that plaintiff's attorneys should not be permitted to reap the benefits of plaintiff's delay in proceeding with this action. The plaintiff replies that all discovery was complete two and a half years ago. The defendant itself could have either served and filed a notice of trial or served a CPLR rule 3216 demand upon the plaintiff to do so. The defendant responds that the language unreasonably delays should refer to the plaintiff's own inaction and not the presumption proposed by the plaintiff that plaintiff needs to take affirmative steps to interfere with the prosecution before this regulation kicks in. The Supreme Court addressed a statute addressing the release of a defendant under civil arrest and utilizing identical language while reporting that it had been unable to find any case directly in point, the court there expressly rejected the position here espoused by the defendant. The court interpreted the phrase unreasonably delays as utilized to describe those actions of a plaintiff which relieve a defendant of some otherwise applicable consequence as in fact necessarily implying some positive act in the way of obstruction. Section 572 of the Code of Civil Procedure provides that a defendant under arrest must, upon his application, be discharged from custody if the plaintiff has unreasonably delayed the trial of the action. In the present case, it may be that there has been unreasonably neglect to prosecute the action but 
there is nothing whatsoever to show that there has been any affirmative act on the part of the plaintiff which the word delay, as used in the section referred to, was, in my judgment, intended to import. I did. 120. Get that perfect. Yeah, I think I need that. Want to read it? Mm-hmm. 